seeing that it took four days for the radiation to come over the Pacific. The first recorded date is on the 17th, so that would actually coincide with the precipitation maps and when these recordings were first recorded. Now remember, they weren't recording these dates every day, so the dates that are recorded are the very first ones with the data that I was looking at where it was the first known recording of radiation on the uh, test results. Seeing that it was in spring and there was a lot of precipitation, it looks like a really good amount of the United States ended up getting it, mostly on the West Coast. But as you could see, from Cleveland to Maine, uh, no uh, area was spared for any deposition of uh, ice, Fukushima isotopes. First of all, I only chose to do March. There, is, as obviously you can see in the graph, you, that April there was picking up April, also. But I only did March, which I figured was the first two explosions. And seeing that the first Unit One exploded on March twelfth, so with four days, it would assume it would be hit in the United States West Coast at about the 16th and then the second explosion which was unit 4 that exploded on March 15th so that would have reached America around the 19th the West Coast as you can see with Honolulu they didn't even take any readings in March at all they just did two readings in April. Although it is shown on April 7th that it did pick up some iodine-131. If you look on the Washington chart here, you can see there's nothing was detected on the 17th. Then it was detected on the 24th. In Portland, they only did the one test on the 25th of March, and they found the iodine-131. There is interesting in the California test on the 15th of March nothing was detected across the board but then they find the uh, iodine-131 on the 22nd and the 22nd is a big day a lot of states are showing up with stuff on the 20 by the 22nd this one I think is TE 132 talor Talornium, but it's definitely in California. But what kills me is they're only doing tests only once a week, even after it's being picked up, and even in some cases every two weeks. In Utah, they didn't start testing, it looks like, until the 17th, and it is picked up on the 17th. There are no previous uh, tests before that that show nothing. In Utah, on the tw on the 28th of March, they find cesium-134, I see, in the precipitation. In Idaho, on the 22nd, they're picking up cesium-134. They're picking up cesium-137 and iodine-131 in big numbers, too, 300s. So like I said earlier, I mostly concentrated on the West Coast and then on the East Coast. But in the middle here, or somewhere in the middle, I picked Ohio and out of Painesville, they picked up. There was nothing detected on the 15th of March. Uh, but it is on 10 days later, on the 25th, they pick up iodine-131. In Ohio, we continue on to New York 
and on the 23rd, there is nothing detected on the 16th test of the 16th of March. There's nothing detected, but on the 23rd, they detect iodine-131. And so we're on the other end of the United States there. We're on Maine, the East Coast, and there's nothing detected on the 18th, but on the 22nd, they detect iodine-131. And then it's already, they're detecting it also into April 20th. But I'm only doing March figures. So I'm using RadNet data. So I'm assuming these numbers are correct. So they didn't even use any for Hawaii. They didn't do no testing. But definitely in California on the 22nd is one of the busiest definitely on the 22nd is the one of the busiest days where you could see there's a lot of activity going on it, it's picking it up everywhere in Idaho California even all the way by Maine is it's picked up on the 22nd so it's basically have already gone across the country by by the 22nd too bad they didn't uh use the data for every day but um, this is proof that uh, this stuff did cover the country and you could see that the uh, four days that it took for the fallout to come across the Pacific on the reading for Washington you could see it's not picking up anything on the 17th but definitely on the 24th, it's picked it up. I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president.